When I think about my own white privilege, I have to honestly say I got through K-12, I got through college, um, and my early 20s without really ever even thinking about it, nor was it ever brought up in curriculum. The term white privilege was popularized in the late 1980s by researcher and author Peggy McIntosh, a women's studies professor who wrote an article that listed almost 50 examples of white privilege. According to McIntosh, she has come to see white privilege as an invisible package of unearned assets that I can count on cashing in each day, but about which I was meant to remain oblivious. White privilege is like an invisible weightless knapsack of special provisions, assurances, tools, maps, guides, code books, passports, visas, clothes, compass, emergency gear, and blank checks. If a person is not white, these unearned privileges cannot be counted on. Among her examples are instances such as stepping up in a challenging situation and not having to be a credit to her race, or being pretty certain that her skin color will be fairly close to the color of a flesh-colored band-aid. White people can change their hair and, surprisingly, no one feels the need to touch it. And white people get to be on money, as if we don't see their faces everywhere else. White people can have full-length arguments with cops. Are you out of your mind? Did you not see me out the light, you crazy son of a b I can, if I wish, arrange to be in the company of people of my race most of the time. I can go shopping alone most of the time pretty well assured that I will not be followed or harassed. When, when I go into a store, I know because of my privilege, my whiteness, I may not be followed like somebody of, or my colleagues of color. Shopping while black. She been following me around the store the whole time. There she goes, she thinks I'm stealing. If you're saying to yourself right now that racial shopping discrimination doesn't exist, chances are you're a white person. Barney's New York, to give just one example, has repeatedly been accused of mistreating black customers. In the case of 19-year-old Trayon Christian, Undercover police officers arrested him when he walked out of Barney's with a $350 belt, despite having shown them proof of purchase. Heck, even Oprah can't avoid racial profiling. Last year, a Swiss clerk refused to show the media mogul a handbag, saying it would cost too much. Another privilege is I can um, financially, I can um, have access to banking, I can have access to buying a house in the areas that that I might um, want to live in. I'm not um, discriminated against because of the color of my skin. Even with same credentials, my white privilege can oftentimes um, elevate me to getting a job over somebody who is not white. What we did is we made up 5,000 resumes. Half of them we put an African-American name, half of them we put a white name. Otherwise, the resumes were the same. And we sent them out. And then we said, which got called back more? And what we found was that the same resume, when it had an African-American name, was about 33% less likely to get an interview than when it had a white name. It means that if a white person is searching for a job for 10 weeks, an equivalently skilled African-American person would be searching for 15 weeks. A, a young man who uh, was walking um, with a group of, he was the only uh, person of color, uh, this was, um, and he was walking across the street uh, with a group of young men, probably, you know, maybe 11 or 12 of them. He was the only person of color, and the police stopped only him as he was crossing the street and and he asked why and it and it was because he was jaywalking yet all 12 of these young men were walking across the street at the same time but only this young man of color was stopped um, by by the police officer Oh, are you fucking kidding me right now? That's like, right?
He's writing my oh, wow. That's racist. There's like 300 people and you give him a ticket for jaywalking? I can turn on the television or open to the front page of the paper and see people of my race widely represented. When I'm told about our national heritage or about um, civilization, I am shown that people of my color made it what it is. A new study by researchers at Stanford University indicates that those who want to deny that white privilege exists do so by maintaining that they have gone through some significant obstacles in their lives. So the subjects in the study were separated into two groups. The group that was shown evidence of white privilege claimed more hardships than those not exposed to evidence of privilege. Okay, So despite this reality, according to the researchers, policymakers and power brokers continue to debate whether racial privilege even exists and whether to address such inequity. One reason for this inaction might be an unwillingness among whites to acknowledge racial privilege, acknowledgement that may be difficult given that whites are motivated to believe that meritocratic systems and personal virtues determine life outcomes. The biggest issue is people don't know what white privilege means, right? So people interpret that as, oh, I didn't actually earn anything in my life, I didn't actually deserve the things that I got in my life uh, because of this ridiculous made up notion of white privilege. But that's not what it is. All it's saying is you have gotten the benefit of the doubt in certain cases, right? So if you're being pulled over by a cop, for instance, if you're a white person, you're less likely to be deemed as a threat as opposed to a black person. White privilege for me, in terms of um, how I see it, is the is the is the systems set in place that um, give white uh, Europeans um, unearned privilege. So this idea of of just because that um, my skin color is white. Uh, I come from that ethnicity, heritage, whatever you want to call it, um, that I have unearned privileges based on the color of my skin over somebody else. The system of white supremacy is designed to be invisible, such that one is often not even aware that that particular system exists. Our buildings, our buildings of higher education, our banking, all of those structures are very white spaces. It's hard for most whites to see their white privilege because white privilege is basically the practice of giving whites the benefit of the doubt and a bit of leeway. It's the practice of granting them a second chance, treating them with understanding and offering sympathy and empathy during difficult times. It's going that extra mile to make sure that white outcomes are pleasant. And when whites have been treated this way by other whites for generations, it's difficult for them to see these actions as advantageous because it's just the normal way of doing business. Most are too busy receiving white privilege perks to notice that people of color aren't treated the same way. Most are blinded to the notion that blacks and others not only aren't given the benefit of the doubt or afforded second chances, but also are frequently treated with suspicion and receive harsh penalties for first time infractions. Read out one by one. Guilty. I don't like to send anybody to jail. Judge Jerry Baxter requested that most of them be handcuffed and removed from the courtroom immediately. They have made their bed and they're gonna have to lie in it. There is a privilege that we hold to believe that, that we we can come into a community of color and tell them how to make themselves better. When I say that there's comfort in white privilege, if I can go to any, any sort of uh, banking institution and get a loan for anything that I would need a loan for, a home, a car, money to go on vacation. I mean, why would I want to, why would I want to share that with other people? Um, if the history of my group and the, the accomplishments of my group are touted in educational settings and reinforced on, in media and reinforced in the movies, why would I want that not to dominate the airway? You know, I think that there's, I think that 
when you're interrupting the status quo, you you think very deeply about how does that how is that going to impact my own personal power and privilege? How is that going to impact the power and privilege of the of the racial group I occupy?